Well, enough about Chase. What else are we talking about today, Conrad? All right. We are covering, as usual, the news, which incidentally, coincidentally includes Chase. Our first segment, we are going to talk about the underhanded brand conquest strategy that is old, but still effective. And finally, we're going to answer a great user submitted question. How would you spend $5,000? Money makes the world go round. Money makes the world go round. Money makes the world go round. And welcome to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Teaching you how to promote, market, and make fat stacks for your legal practice. Here on Legal Talk Network. All right, everyone, welcome to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Let's do some news with our new retro news drop. All right, we started off talking about my hatred of J.P. Morgan Chase as a business banker. Um, but they they were in the news. It was fascinating. And this is a really, really big seismic shift. J- well, we'll put a link in the show notes to this. But J.P. Morgan has started an advertising agency. And the basis of this, and this is very obvious, and we talked about, we've talked a lot about digital privacy. Guess who's got a lot of access to a lot of data about your purchasing behavior? The issuer of that Chase credit card. Eight 80 million people using Chase credit cards. And JP Morgan started a marketing Chase Media Solutions to help brands get in front of highly targeted people based on their user behavior. The other interesting thing that I see with this, Keith, this is really fascinating and, and impacts the legal world. So what this might mean is legal is out of the, the game, but they're doing this on a performance basis. Because it's a credit card, they know... They, they literally process the payment and can take that payment out, right? So if you're really into Coke and they start advertising Coke for you and you buy a Coke, they can actually literally run as a percentage of revenue, which is, I mean, this is all makes a ton of sense to me. Um, I don't know that this will ever hit legal, but it is a fascinating evolution. What do you think? I love this story. Um, you know, for forever... We've been saying things like everybody is in the digital media business. And this, to me, is the final proof of a bank is a digital media company. Yeah. <laughs> everybody is. Um, you know, I think you hit on some of the high notes. I, I, I think it's fascinating from a, you know, PR uh, consumer privacy thing, right? Like, our, do, if you're a... And this is, you know, somewhere in some department inside of Chase with probably some help of some consulting companies, market research, surveys, all this stuff to conclude that on balance, advertising on our customer data is more valuable than the potential hit that we might take from people being concerned that they're selling our data. And again, anecdotally, you know, we know that even despite a lot of the vocal concerns that uh, consumers have had about privacy, they don't dump the services. They don't dump. Yeah. They don't stop That's using exactly Google. Right. They don't stop using Meta. They don't stop using TikTok. They don't, they, you know, remember uh, ad blocker apocalypse? That's never happened. No one's adding right. ad blockers to their browsers. And, um, yeah, there's no doubt to me like this is going to, and and you, so you were talking about in the context of it coming to legal. I think the interesting thing is going to be lawyers are going to want to advertise on this data, right? Yeah. Uh yeah. hey, I can just select, you know, everybody's you know, the, the we hear this one all the time. Divorces for high net worth individuals. Sure. There. That that data is right there, right? Very very much right there. 
Um, and, and it's not just it's not just the the amount it's it's spending habits. Well, it's things like okay, so let's take divorce. I'll be silly because I can't come up with a good example here, but I just bought a bunch of scotch and tissues and uh, ice cream. Maybe that indicates that I'm having marital problems, right? Like I'm or an it, awesome party, or an awesome party, or I bought a new car, right? So like <laughs> there's there's going or or I bought some crutches. All of a sudden you're you know. You go buy uh, a bunch of crutches at uh, CVS, and all of a sudden you're getting hit with um, advertisements from from law firms, right? So this the ideas is, are this limitless. Is, okay, paid search. Talk to me about recent data on paid search, Guy. Yes. Yeah, so uh, this comes from the good folks at Search Engine Land. U.S. search and ad revenues hit eighty eight point eight billion dollars in twenty twenty three. Search revenue grew 5.2% year on year. However, paid search, our good friend paid search, we love paid search. Paid search is still king. It continues to own the largest market share of all advertising, 39.5%. However, that is down from 40% in 2022 and 41% in 2021 and 42% in 2020. So, Paid search, overall buying, had it tend, trending down. Conrad, what's up with this? What's going on well, with paid search? I think the interesting thing here, and I, you, I'm, a, I'm making the assumption that you get the very similar questions that I get. And the number one question I get is, what are the channels other than paid search that I can be spending my money on? And I think that's a good thing to be thinking about because it is a very, very expensive channel. That's what I was going to um, ask you. Why do you think people are asking that more? And does that is that part of the story of why paid search revenues down? I think people are looking to expand opportunities outside of paid search because everyone is playing in the game. And as we've talked about before, the economics of the bidding system mean that the more people who are playing in the game, the more expensive it is for everyone playing the game. And Google has made it unbelievably easy to A, get in the game, and B, spend money in the game on things that you don't think you're actually spending money on. And so the amount of money going in there uh, just has increased. It's made it more expensive. But, and I do not want to lose this point, If and this is a, a poor comparative, but we can use this. If we're talking about 40% of the market, 40% of advertising is, gone, is done through paid search. That means if you if you sit down and you're like, this channel is just so expensive, I'm out. You're walking away something close to 40% of the market. That is a big deal. Now, we have clients who do this. Paid search is the first thing that I want to jettison, if possible, right? Because it's so expensive. And if you can generate business outside of paid search, Merry Christmas, do it all day long. And I encourage you to do that. But you are walking away from a significant portion. And, and assume that those ad dollars aren't ag, you know, ag, spent evenly across the different channels from popularity. And that, that goes to my point of it being expensive. So maybe it's not, it's not 40% of the market, but it's not 10% either. It's probably closer to a third of the market or 30% of the market on digital that business goes through paid search. And, and if you walk away from it because it's too expensive, you are, you are constraining your growth. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, but it's, it is a, is a point to keep in mind when you talk about yeah, leaving I, paid search. Yeah, I think there are a couple things going on. I think certainly, as you mentioned, the price per click is becoming prohibitive. And even when it's not, also consumer behavior is changing. People are people are giving attention to other platforms. In fact, you know, part of this uh, report, year over year growth for search advertising is slower than the digital industry as a whole. So, like, there there are more there are options for advertising that have lower cost per acquisition, and there's increased consumer volume on these other platforms. Now, they don't they still don't have intent. The intent-based ads, the a advertising has traditionally been spent on intent-based advertising, which makes all the sense in the world to me. If you want to sell coffee cups, you want to find people who are buying coffee cups. 
However, an increasingly amount of, of money is being spent on longer term brand development and affinity and awareness. And that is being done through different platforms outside of pay-per-click by and large. Well, right. very well articulated to the YouTubers. Hey there. How's it going? Are you subscribed to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing? Give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Um, in fact, if you're contemplating subscribing, but you're not sure, go check out our episode, You Asked, We Answered, A Line in the Spam. I think it might resonate with you if you enjoyed today's episode. So today we're going to talk about the underhanded brand conquest strategy, which utilizes search engines to drive traffic for people looking for your competitors. Now, we've talked about this thematically, and it's an advertising problem and it's an SEO problem. But in some cases, there's actual confusion deliberately sown by competitors to profit off of your brand. Um, mm -hmm. Why are we talking about this? Ben Glass sent us a example of someone using his very good reputation for their own efforts. Geek, can you talk about what Ben Glass did and how or what, what was done to Ben Glass and how the company that did it would profit from doing so? Yeah, so this is an old school tactic. Dirty. <laughs> and essentially, what another firm uh, created a page on their website. It's optimized for Ben Glass Law and um, actually said some nice things. Not Nothing bad, you know, pretty benign. Um, you know, hey, Ben Glass, I, in fact, I would probably, we'll put a link in there. Um, but you know, nothing, it wasn't, it wasn't even a nasty thing. And Ben Glass is saying, you know, what should we do? Why did they do this? What should we do about it? You know, cease and desist, blah, blah. And for those that are, for the uninitiated, the idea here in theory is, is that, you know, you got a page on your site. It shows up in searches for Ben Glass Law as it did for Ben because, or Ben's marketing team, because that's how they found it. So right. it's ranking for Ben Glass Law. And uh, the idea is, is that maybe someone that's searching for Ben Glass Law clicks on that link, reads the page about Ben, Gla reads the paragraph on Ben Glass Law. But below that paragraph is all the great things that this firm does and why they should hire this firm instead. And, you know, Ben's asking, you know, what should you do about it? What do you think about this, Conrad? What do you think about this uh, aggressive brand conquest strategy? Aggressive brand conquest strategy. So I, I think let me, I'm going to take this at a highly philosophical level. And then I think we need to kind of get down into the, the kind of dirtier grossness of it. I do believe, and Google has had this perspective on pay-per-click. You could bid on other people's brands, like go back a long, long time ago with pay-per-click. And the reason that they suggested this, and I don't think they are wrong, is that if you're looking to buy a Ford F-150, you should also consider a Chevy Silverado. And there's no reason that Chevy shouldn't be able to put their car in front of you because um, you're considering looking at the Ford F-150, right? So I conquest don't think strategy. that's... Un it's total conquest. And by the way, this has been part of marketing for years, right? Absolutely. Like this is a part of the game, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we can kind of hate the way that this was actually done, but I, I do believe that I, I, I philosophically at the highest level, I, I think this is a good tactic. I'll give you an example. You know, if you, we, we can run the pay-per-click example on this with the branded campaigns. If you are bidding on Morgan and Morgan and pretending to be Morgan and Morgan when people call your firm, or if your website looks like Morgan and Morgan, we can get into this. If your website looks like Morgan and Morgan and you're pretending to be Morgan, that's underhanded gross and you should lose your license. But if you have, if when people are looking for Morgan and Morgan, you want to give them why your local business is a better mousetrap, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a good thing. And I think it's a good thing for you. I think it's a good thing for Morgan and Morgan because it, 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 it falls right into their positioning. And I think it's a good thing for the end consumer. So my question, did you agree with those key? Do you agree with those premises? Well, I, I philosophically, I agree with you. Okay. Uh, philosophy philosophy major Guy, for those of you who don't philosophy know, major Guy. Guy was a philosophy major. I was econ. Uh, I wish we had switched, but okay. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that, uh, you know, look, you can't, you can't use competitor, you can't do any of the misleading stuff. You can't use competitor 
uh, names in your ads. You can't use their logos. You can't put it on their landing pages. But it, but can I? And ironically, Google went from you know questions of like, is it permissible? Google's like, sure, you can bid on competitors' names too. Now we're going to force you to bid on competitors' names unless you tell us not to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's gross. And Just now ironic. we're gonna, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, but here's my. Here, let's get let's get a little bit more uh, okay. tactically objective here. So okay. I like you, this. The, this is what you have to. You, you got your pros and your cons sheet out. Here's the, here's the best you're going to have on the pro side. Okay. Somebody does a search for this competitor's name, whether it's your ad creative or your organic listing, you motivate them to click right now. It's, I think it's a little bit in this, we're going to use this specific example, which I think is a little bit nasty because he's using Ben glass in the title tag, which means Ben glass law is yeah. showing up in the listing. That's misleading to me. You think it's um, because it's in the title tag. Yeah, he doesn't misleading. say he, he he doesn't say thinking of Ben Glass question mark try me. Right. Like right. He's saying it's saying Ben Glass ben Law. Ben Glass Law. Okay. Um, so you get to the page and you, you get this consumer that was searching for Ben Glass comes to your page, and you're hoping that what you the copy, you know, the <laughs> The idiotic unedited AI copy, as Ben calls it, calls it <laughs> is going to motivate someone who is searching for Ben to call you and hire you. Okay. Okay. That's pro. That's that's the best. Is it, that's the whole purpose of the strategy. The whole purpose that's, of the strategy is, that's is the to conference. try to. That's the whole conquest. So that's the that's the pro. That's what you're hoping happens. Okay. We'll put a pin in the efficiency of that. Like how many people out of ten thousand people, how many are actually going to search click call and hire because of that all right con side of the house really not great for making friends not great for professional reputation i mean you got ben glass calling you out on linkedin ben glass isn't going to be referring you any cases ben knows a lot of lawyers in your local community he's got a whole following that's probably not going to ingratiate you to that entire community. Now, maybe you don't care. Maybe you're like, whatever, that one case is worth it. But that's the con side. Um, you know, there is there uh, some um, false and misleading communication stuff going on here that might run afoul of the bar rules? Yep. Whoa, I think it's a, I, here we, for those of you who are wondering, we are 14 minutes in and Guy brought up ethics. Uh, so, okay. yeah, but, but not, not in a philosophical sense in a, okay. you're violating your rules of professional conduct in a way that might get you some kind of punishment. Maybe. I mean, we know the state bars, they don't really have the enforcement mechanism, but you know, if Ben printed this stuff out and sent it to the Virginia state bar, I think I bet you he'd get somebody's ear on something. Um, okay. you know, this guy's trying to draft off my brand using my brand name in his title tags. So that's, that's in the con side for me. Um, and then overall, I guess on the con, so my, I guess this is in the con side. I said I put an asterisk in the pro. Is this ever going to work? Especially if you're how, when you're running. I think ad it does. Dollars. I think it does if you do it the right way. Okay. Like let me use Morgan Morgan as, as an example, right? Mm -hmm. If if Morgan Morgan has moved into your market and you want to be like, listen, don't hire the big Walmart. You want the guy who's who's lived in small town USA and who who went to the same high school that you did and, you know, came back to give back to the community. Yeah. That's going to work. Right. This so is I why think, I think, okay. yeah, I think, I think if you're like Morgan and Morgan versus my law firm, right. You have yeah. a page of Morgan and Morgan versus my law firm. Now I philosophically, again, I'm with you and I'm, I'm so fortunately bringing up the ethics issues again. Okay. You know, they're, they're, uh, depending on how you do it, Drawing comparisons, you know, objective, factually verifiable comparisons between firms could potentially get you in trouble with the state bar. You have to be very careful with how you do it, but you could do it and pull it off. And again, philosophically, I'm with you. I think it's, you know, we, we've seen some of the people have done this kind of thing in the offline world where they'll, you know, they'll make fun of another uh, law firm's ads uh, so that, you know, they're it's the recognition, the brand recognition that the other firm's getting their drafting off sure. of that. It's not quite the same thing, but, um, so again, philosophically, I'm with you. I think this is, this is what positioning is. Standing out is it's what do we do differently? A hundred percent. And I, I, and I think, and again, I'm a 
overly aggressive marketing person, if you can lean into positioning yourself against other firms and, and you're going to attract or not attract some clients because of that, I think that's, and, and, and create some clients because of that, I think that is 100% okay. So you Absolutely. have no problem with what On The Map did to us. Well, so uh, to you, so <laughs> Guy, so this is, this is where this gets interesting, uh, right? Okay. So, so no, no, no. What can, you explain, can you explain what's going on? It's the same thing that's yeah. happening with Ben, but explain what's going on, and then what we can talk about happened, the puppies. Yes, what happened with Ben has, you know, like we said, this is an old school tactic. Uh, Conrad and I have both uh, been on the receiving end of this, you know, and in some ways I'm like, oh, this is flattering. They think that we have brands worthy of conquesting. Um, but on the map, you know, they, re they write reviews of a bunch of other digital marketing agencies. And again, presumptu you know, presumptively, they're trying to um, capitalize and get some lawyers that are searching for Mockingbird and Attorney Sync to come to their site, read the comparison, and contact them instead. And, you know, I, the, the first thing that I thought of is, is like, gosh, uh, if a lawyer did that kind of search, made that search for our company's name, went to on the map, read that blurb and decided to go with them. Like, seems like not very critical thinking. Like you're, you're just taking, they're saying we're better and we like puppies better. And you're, that's, that's just taking them, what they wrote about themselves versus us on their own website. You're giving that a lot of weight. Like, that's the thing to me where I'm like, that's why strategically too, I'm like, I, cause I hear you on the standing out and the differentiation. Right. Um, but it, it, at least in the context when I was on the other side of it, I'm like, people are falling for this. And I'm like, yeah, they are, I guess, well, you know, no, no, but they are. So like, I'll, I'll, I'll read this. This is, and again, I don't want, I'm, I want this to be expensive an example as opposed to me coming across as defensive. Um, I, I don't, I don't mind. Yeah, this is sour grapes, Conrad. This is not they're a sour, sour grapes. marketing you. But we're going to use this as an example of where I think this really works. I'll, I'll read this is from their review of my agency. Mockingbird is well reputed online marketing agency with the expertise and blah, blah, blah. Plot it, right? However, you may want to work with a company that will focus all its energies on helping your law firm dominate the market, not one that accepts work from your competitors, Right. So if I read this and I'm looking at different marketing agencies, I'm like, oh, fuck, marketing does. Ah, I dropped the ah, F bomb. We got gotcha. you. Ah, yes. Damn it. Victory. So close. Okay. Victory again. Oh, foo foo. I don't want to work <laughs> with an agency that doesn't offer exclusivity. I'm going to cross Mockingbird off my list. Right. Um, now, the fact that they happen to be wrong about that. That's, that's um, the other thing that I was going to say is like, again, a lot of this stuff is just not right. Well, it's not accurate, right? So, so you accurate. have the accuracy. And I think that's where like a, a Chevy versus a Silverado problem, a Chevy versus a Ford problem, like you can't have factual inaccuracies. I think the same thing applies in the legal world. But on the web, you can write whatever you want. Well, and again, my here's my, there's, I'll say the same thing I said about Ben Glass. When other agency people, it's not a huge world. Yeah. When other agency people see this, do you yeah. think that does it make you more, less, or indifferent about referring business to them or recommending them or inviting them to speak or all the other things that go into relationship building professionally? I would, yes, your point is well taken. I would go on the less side of things. I also think, bluntly, this indicates the tactics that they may use for your own firm. Right, and right. I would want I bet accuracy. You well, I can't say so, that. as a you, know, you wanna you wanna go there. So <sighs> the the and and the problem that as you're asking me as the agency owner, not as an uninformed lawyer looking at this from the outside, the reason this drops on the map out of the consideration set of really good agencies is if this is what they have to do for themselves, and this is what they would then, and they're okay with this inaccuracies and all this is the kind of work that they would deliver for their clients i would not want that i would never send them a referral because this reflects what their work looks like and i think you would agree with that right yeah i i mean again i my whole thing about this from the stop the same thing with the ben glass thing is is like yeah whether it whether it wins you maybe maybe it, maybe they conquest our brand you know maybe someone that was thinking about us saw that 
page and was motivated to contact them. I'm sure that happens. And for that, for that handful of, well, maybe it happens for you. I don't think that many people are searching attorney sync anyway, but for that, for that one or, you know, handful of clients that happens to on balance, the impact that that has in the community, is it worth it? You know, is it worth it the, for the lawyer who did it to Ben Glass? Is it worth it? Um, you know, here we are talking about it. Um, well, let me, let me know, add another maybe, layer maybe some to others, this. Maybe some other people think it's clever and creative. And they're like, gosh, I wish I was doing that. <laughs> it's, I, it's not clever or creative, right? Like, it, again, it's, this is I old. Like, but I want to, I want to add another element on this because we've definitely seen this in the past. What if, what if they're actually bidding on Ben Glass's name and then sending people to that? What if, what if you add the pay-per-click advertising element on top of that? You said before, like, A, do these things actually rank for a name? I don't know. Ben found it for his name, but like, what was that specific query? I don't know. But you can add the layer of pay-per-click on top of this, which then becomes really, really fascinating because those clicks where there is intention to hire a Ben Glass, and you can then buy those clicks at a much lower rate than the work that he typically does, absolutely do that does that mean and, and you can convert a percentage of those people that you you position I, I think the way this is done with ben glass is poor because there's no positioning differentiation right there's right. really not but if right. you could it's, prove that i think that's key to making this work if you could make that case and you can buy that traffic at a lower cost i don't know that that doesn't work uh, again, I I I presume that it does work yep, some right, right. amount of the time. Um, my question, though, is: is in the grand scheme of things, in your local community, was it worth it? Because you're not, you know, Ben's like joking around about sending a cease and desist out, right? That's I, I, the way that you're going to be viewed by your peers. So I, if you're if you're the if you're the 800 pound gorilla. It might make sense. Maybe, you know, John Morgan probably doesn't care if, uh, you know, you're not going to refer to him. He's like, you're not referring to me anyway because you hate my billboards and you hate everything right. about me and I'm the the king of the mountain. So maybe maybe for John Morgan that he can steal some brand. But if you're the, you know, young lawyer just getting started or you're maybe you've been doing, you've been in the trenches running for five years. Do you really want to disenfranchise the entire community? Do you want John let, Morgan sending you a cease and desist? Hold Maybe on. you do. Maybe. I think I'm I'm taking exception with okay. your entire community comment. Okay. Fair. I'm I'm trying to be paint a broad brush to you're, drive my you're point. Painting home. A broad, so let, let me let me put this back <laughs> to you. There are and you are too kind hearted and high minded to name anyone, but there are certainly people in the legal marketing industry who you think do not deserve to be in this industry. <laughs> by so, by okay, silence, he yes. is agreeing with me. Yes. <laughs> in theoretically. And theoretically. And if you like a list of those names, you can look at them on attorneysync.com slash blog. Right. Um, no, but if you wouldn't mind if their perspective of you was lower and you were able to draw good law firms who were going to get screwed by crappy agencies away from that awful, miserable fate. I would have, I, we don't do this, but like, I, I don't have a problem. We, we've done conquest that. campaigns. We've bid on competitor okay. names and said, thinking of them, try us. Um, to varying degrees of success. And to your point, like you're right. I didn't care. I didn't care if this company's name that I was bidding on. Yeah. However, I don't bid on your name. Right. So this is my point with the, the whole community thing. Like, let yeah. me, re okay, let me put fair. this differently in our world. I don't care if the people at Scorpion or fine law hate my guts. There I you go. don't. Boom. I would actually like them to publicly hate Boom. my guts because so that's much a for them ever sponsoring lunch hour legal marketing. <laughs> Um, it was interesting. I saw Scorpion uh, at a booth uh, at MTMP. I thought that was interesting. But um, no, like I don't care, right? Like it's actually right. if if Fine Law hates so, me and Scorpion hates me, it's a win for me. And I think excellent that, point. Yeah, but got to think about our worlds and stuff here, right? Like if you're in, you know, Fairfax, Virginia, is not the same thing as serving a national audience of law firms, right? Sure. So the, your community. You know, you're in a smaller community. 
Maybe people, maybe there's a disproportionate amount of word of mouth goes on in your community. Um, maybe you're right. Maybe if you don't respect the person, you still don't care. Um, but I'm all I'm saying is there's potentially a, a reputational sure. cost. Sure. That's all I'm, that's all I'm saying. Okay. So. All right. When we come back, we're going to move on and answer the question. How would you spend $5,000 on marketing in a crowded market? All right, everyone, Guy and I had an amazing office hour session. We did two of them so far where we invited you to come and ask us questions in real time, and we made up answers, and most of them were accurate. We're doing another one. May 3rd, join us on YouTube or LinkedIn. On May 3rd, bring your hardest questions. If you are a member of the community, we'd love to hear from you. Write them down. Send them ahead of time if you want. If you can find us, we'll answer them or show up in real time, and we will figure out the answer to your hardest legal marketing questions. Join us on May 3rd, LinkedIn, and YouTube. All right, Conrad, got a great question for you. I want to okay. paint a picture. All right. You know, I've been practicing 10 years. I'm a PI lawyer. I'm in a you know, relatively big market, not not one of the big three or big five, maybe top 20 market, maybe 10 through 15, 10 through 20. Uh, I got $5,000 a month to spend on my marketing. Um, you know, I've got a little bit of a web presence. I do have a Google business profile. Got like 20 some reviews on my Google business profile. Um, what should I do? I got five grand. How should I spend it? So I'm going to make the potentially fallacious assumption that you want to grow your business. I do. I do want okay. to grow. I, I, you know, I feel like I should be growing. You, you know? feel like you should be growing. I feel, I feel like, like I, I should, should be growing, growing hair, but that's not happening either. <laughs> um, and, and you do, you do personal injury in a personal secondary injury. market in a large yeah, I mean, market. Pretty, pretty. Let's see what mar Let's see the size of my market here. So, by the way, this is a real question from a real user that he's looking up the background on um, yeah. right now. We'll say but, I'm in a city of uh, 700,000 people. Oh, that's a smaller city than I thought you were going to say. Okay. Well, okay. You got, you got five same. grand. And so, well, let's, the, I think the starting point to think about this, I'm going to use some very round numbers just to keep my math easy, is the cost per client that you're willing to accept in personal injury. And let's use very, very round numbers to make my life easy. Uh, let's say in your industry, a motor vehicle accident is worth $15,000. And there's a distribution and blah, blah, blah. But like, let's just say that's what our run-of-the-mill number looks like. In digital marketing, you are looking at, especially things like pay-per-click and probably LSAs, um, you are probably, and that direct response, like I put in some money and I look at what comes out the other end. You're looking at a minimum of 20%, if not more, a lot more, up to 40% of the cost per case in order to acquire that case. And so at five grand, you're, you're getting one case a month. So plus or minus one or two. <laughs> Right. So you're not going to see. So setting your expectations, dear optimistic 10 year old lawyer, you're not going to see a massive change by spending $5,000 on this. And the reason I can say that with a high level of certainty, and that's on the direct response side, is because you are in a 700 person city, which is not all that so, big. So I screwed it up. It's actually, ah. it was, it was 700,000 in 2018. Today, it is a city of 2 million people. Which makes it even, so you're reinforcing my point. I am. Um, it's going to be difficult to make a big dent. And in the direct response, pay per click, LSAs, as two very clear examples in that, you're probably going to cost per client of, you know, a third, um, give or take. And it depends on how picky you are and how good you are at intake and all that kind of stuff. Um, so the, your five grand is going to get net you 10 clients a year. Uh, five grand a month is going to net you 10 clients a year. You're not going to really notice it, I hope, if you've been doing a bunch of work in the past. And you've been around for 10 years, so that's presumably the case. 
If I take a long-term perspective on this, I think what you want to do is find a segment of that 2 million that you identify with or that you want to support. And I don't care what that segment is. But if you try and boil the 2 million person ocean, nothing is going to happen. I do believe there's an opportunity to you build for you over the long term to build both brand awareness and affinity among a specific subset of that 2 million and be very, very effective in doing so. And I don't care what that subset is. If it's people who like Michigan State football or hate puppies or are runners or um, it doesn't matter what that group is. But I do believe there is room for almost every firm to build a relationship with a market that resonates with them. So I'm out on SEO. I'm out on local. You got 20 reviews in a 2 million person city doing personal injury. Local does not exist for you. And I could be wrong. Run local Falcon to prove that I'm wrong, but I'm not. Um, SEO, unless you unless you've been killing it for a long time and there's no one else in the market, there's no one else in the market who has thought that might be a good marketing channel, which is not the case. SEO is not going to work for you. Um, that's my answer. I don't know. What would you do, Key? Well, I want to also even uh, define the uh, this persona a little bit more deeply because I'm going to assume for the sake of this conversation, they've already got intake locked down. Huh. They've, ar- they've already got delivering high-level client experience locked down because that's the, if you're not doing that, take some of that five grand and go invest in that first LSAs. Um, you know, can't, I, I would say can't hurt, probably not going to help that much. PPC. Forget about it. Forget um, about it. Yeah. Uh, SEO in general, again, I, you know, that's not, I'm not spending the five K on that. Uh, so what would I spend the 5k on? You know, I'd be doing like old school, like local community stuff. Like maybe I'm going to sponsor some, maybe I'm going to offer us uh, one of these like super hyper local scholarship things to get and not for the purpose of like getting backlinks to rank in the local pack, but to actually get some like visibility, that. some good, you know, affinity. I think Conrad's point about leaning into, uh, a sub group in your like that you that whether it's a cause or a group or just something that y'all like to do together uh get you know take everybody out to dinner take everybody in that group out to dinner sponsor that group's um you know race or something if it's a you know cycling or something like that um and 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 i would be heavily working on and this is uh it's the referrals right it's i would go take a you know other depending on what's all that we said of two million a community of two million. So don't boil the ocean like Conrad said, but maybe there is a a, a smaller business group that's got uh you know professionals in your community that are uh, active in that like to do stuff together, or like you know, mastermind and that kind of thing. You know, again, would I spend the five grand on that? Not like as I probably wouldn't spend it as like a you know subscription, but would I would I take people out to games? Would I, you know, pick up happy hour? Would I take people to dinner? Absolutely. I think that's probably the best way, you know, especially if this is, you know, if five grand, this is your whole budget. That's the other thing that we talk about this all the time here on LHLM. What percentage of your budget is this five grand? This is a hundred percent. This is all of your money that you're going to put in marketing. I'd be doing a lot of relationship, networking, sponsorship type of things. All right. I, as you've been talking, I've come up with three additional ideas. Fantastic. You talked about content and SEO, and I kind of badmouth. And by the way, it hurts me. I kind of barf every time I say bad things about SEO because I love it so much. But building content for your not boil the ocean approach, right? Building content around whatever whatever group that is with the express perspective of generating people who are looking for from within that group, whatever it might be, don't care. Building content around that, I am 100% in on. From an SEO perspective, that is unique opportunity for you to stand out. While we're talking about websites and content, 
if your website's garbage and you've been around for 10 years and it's dated, you are losing clients because of that. If you are getting referral clients and you're being vetted online and your website says, I cannot afford a website or this looks like garbage, you're losing clients. So a website redesign, if you've been around for 10 years and you haven't touched it in nine years, that is probably a good use of your funds. Um, and finally, I was thinking about this when, you, when we talked about the, you were saying Google business profile. You're not gonna win in your city with 20 reviews in personal injury on local. You're just not. Right. The only reason I said it is for brand. People yeah. searching on your name. Okay. So this is where I went with this. You also, and we don't know Jimmy, who we're philosophically speaking about. Jimmy has a lake house. It's about 45 minutes outside of 2 million city. And that's like a sleepy lake house. There's no lawyers there. There's nothing going on. There's a small community. Boy, oh boy, if you get five or six Google reviews near your lake house, there's an office nearby. You take that five grand, you're going to spend $500 on an office somewhere. It doesn't cost you much. That is a marketing expense, by the way. That's not a bad idea. Um, I, I, I kind of like that idea. So don't try and win downtown, but that lake house, you know, Lake, lake Sheboygan, like little Lake Sheboygan. Now I'm going to give you, you another you, one. You may, oh, see, you guys just keep listening and the pearls will keep coming and I won't. Well, well you said you had puppies. three, so you didn't get well, to was, your other was, two. Go, go. No, that was, that was it. That's all you got. Oh, Content. that's all you got. Okay. There's all three were in there. Content, redo your website if it looks like crap and open open the office near your lake house. Love that idea. I'm going to throw one in there. I think I think you're going to disagree with me on this one. This is why oh, I'm, partic awesome. I'm particularly fond of it. Write content about your competitors' names and why you are a better choice. Right. Um, actually, now I thought of two. Well, it's the same same topic, but two different ways. Okay. You're going to spend ad money or whether it's social or you're going to do direct mail. Again, it depends on the community and I'm not trying to boil the ocean here. But you're advertising directly to referral sources, not mm. to necessarily clients. So I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Custom audience campaign or a very tar you know, you're, you're on LinkedIn and you're like, I'm going to advertise only to lawyers at firms of this, of small size law firms that have this type of practice that are in this location. And I'm going to do a video ad that's saying, Hey, I know that your clients, sometimes they're looking for a recommendation on a lawyer. I want to let you know, we've been doing this for 5,000 years. We fight so hard for you. No, don't do that ad creative, but Millions to position recovered. yourself. To, to position yourself as somebody in their community who, um, you know, get in front of them. And, and ideally, to Conrad's points, if you, can, if you can do this in a way where, you know, maybe you're in a shared private group that's around an affinity audience or something like that, um, or you just send a direct mail piece. I mean, people, are, you'd be surprised, again, like zigging versus when other people aren't zagging. You send a nice handwritten letter to somebody. Um, you know, I called it direct mail, but even just a handwritten letter. Uh, that costs money. You know, the hun in hundred, it could cost hundreds of dollars. Uh, you don't necessarily need to do five thousand dollars a month, but that's another one I, that I would, I would, I'd kind of flip it on its head and say, hey, in addition to the networking, in addition to the dinners, in addition to the in-person interaction, how can I get in front of my referral sources in my local community through paid social ads, direct mail, or or other creative ways? You know, maybe it's YouTube advertising. Maybe there's a YouTube channel that the local community is all on. Maybe you're doing putting ads there. All right. I got another one, but I'm going to keep it for my clients. Oh. We just keep going. You and I are just going to riff on brilliance. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're saving your best stuff. So, well, hold on. Ah, we got to Hold on, Adam. Mm -hmm. Adam's trying to. The reason I said I'm going to save it really is because Adam's trying to shut us up because we've been going right. on. This well, we've been going episode. long. We've been going long here. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a quick one. All right. Every month, pick a rep, a a local business that you are going to promote. 
Yes. You're going to spend $5,000. You win. You win. This is the best idea. Okay. You're going to spend five. I'll we'll use uh, Valentine's Day. In February, you're going to spend $5,000 promoting Mitzi's Chocolate Shack. And you're going to go out of your way to get people to stop buying stuff from uh, CVS and, and Amazon. You want them to go and, and, and work with Mitzi and want to buy their chocolate from Mitzi. Um, uh, what's a, what's a, I'm using Valentine's Day as a bad example. A florist. Go encourage people to buy, not through 1-800-Flowers, but through you know Bill's Florist Shop. So go, go pick, pick one business locally every month and, and market the crap out of them and put your, put your five grand into that. That's what I would do. And create is great content assets around it in a variety of different ways. Yep. Pr- put paid promotion behind it. Yes. Uh, almost, you know, you're, be, you, the short version is you can be the ad agency for another local business. 100%. And it's all about supporting your community. That's what I would do. Maybe. That's the, I love that. That's exactly what I would do too. Well, I suppose since we're getting the hook here off the stage, um, thank you so much for listening. If you haven't subscribed before to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing, please do subscribe. Check us out across the internet and join us for office hours. Uh, We've been having a blast this office hours concept. Yeah. Uh, We hope to see you there. Bring your questions. We'd love answering specific questions. Until next time. Ian Conrad for Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Money makes a money makes a it makes a world go round. Money 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 makes a world go round.